So we have a scintillating um, set of presentations coming up. Six presentations on food security and nutrition, uh, followed by an exciting ten table uh, uh, discussion. Um, and in between, lunch. So uh, um, lots of excitement coming up. Um, uh, the talks are, uh, are coming. I want to make a few key points um, that I want you to bear in mind uh, as we move through. First thing is that forests and trees, in terms of their contribution to food and nutrition, are only part of most people's livelihoods. It's very rare that people's entire livelihood is based on trees or forests. It's a contribution to a much more complex system, and so it's all in the interactions often um, um, at a livelihood level. And livelihoods are embedded in landscapes. And by the way, we're not still in the Sentinel Landscape Workshop. That was yesterday and the day before, for those of us who were in it. Landscapes and Sentinel Landscapes remain important now, but we're working in a broader range of environments than just the Sentinel uh, Landscapes. The key point is that you've got lots of different livelihood systems interacting at a landscape scale, with bridging and binding social capital being important um, in terms of linking um, those different livelihood systems together and linking amongst very different livelihood systems like um, pastoralists moving their livestock through um, um, agricultural areas and very much uh, the interlocking livelihoods uh, become very significant. No, no, no more important than in, in Nepal, where you can't understand what's going on unless you realize, I'm bringing from the 10-year session that we've just had, um, collectively used, individually used land, interacting via livestock, um, and trees being hugely important because um, forest communal, commonly owned forest areas increasingly degraded and then under community control, meaning that fodder no longer available from those, Farmers have to grow the trees on their farms. The whole thing changes. Now, the language that we tend to use is tree-based solutions. But quite often, once we see the trees, it's not the tree that needs to actually change. So we were able to increase maize production by 30% in the mid-hills of Nepal once you realise that the trees are there and interacting with the maize. And if you select through farmer participatory selection, varieties that suit the complex environment that farmers are using, then they're much more productive. <clears throat> and what is going on here? The farmers plant at way, way higher densities than uh, recommended. They thin to way lower densities than recommended. And they do all this um, 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 relay cropping with, with millet on terraces with trees. Simit was selecting maize in, in beautiful terraces with no trees at the correct densities. Why are, is the thinning being done? To feed animals. Because the objective of the farmer is not just to produce, produce maize, but to run their whole system, which is maize, uh, uh, tree fodder, providing a winter feed um, um, for, for cattle, um, um, and the whole thing has to work and, and, and of course the manure from the, the cows goes back onto the land. The trees, critical in that role, but tree-based, not necessarily in terms of the solutions. Let us have an open mind. Simple approaches to food security analysis. Keeping the livestock element, we're working with Mark Van Beek at um, Ilry <coughs> to look at um, trees and food security. And if we do a very simple analysis, now, I don't know about what you think about a lot of these questionnaires that are going on in the CG. CCAFs have one that takes about two days or something to administer. <clears throat> um, there, there are others I've seen which are you know, equally problematic. And I've been hearing a number of people talking about the central landscapes yesterday saying there's real farmer fatigue, smallholder fatigue, in um, uh, interacting with us. Well, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't want to spit, sit down for two days and, and, and talk about um, um, uh, my duty of my uh, livelihood. 
So we need much more uh, simple, straightforward, quick tools. Half an hour questionnaire uh, on, on food security can produce really exciting data. And here, again, let's get away from means. We all know the problem of mean values and looking at differences between means. One foot in the fire, one foot in the freezer, and I'm a comfortable temperature. In reality, of course, I'm not. And, and we really have a problem if we don't actually look at distributions. Here you can see the green is uh, uh, food consumed, the red livestock consumed, the blue crop sold, um, and, uh, 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 and then livestock sold. And you can see for four places, Malkasa and Bako in Ethiopia, Bugasira and Gishwati in Rwanda, we get very different distributions. This red line, oops, this red line um, um, shows uh, where we're at, a uh, food security uh, uh, value of index of one, so below that you've got food security uh, problems. What we can see here is that the makeup is very different, um, the numbers of people with serious problems are very different, and the way in which they are building their food security is very different, and there are variations within and between the sites. And that leads us to not just options by context, minus theory of place, but to embedding options by context within a co-learning framework. And that is realizing there are no silver bullets, um, but what we need to do is to be developing interventions and the evidence of what interventions are most cost effective in different contexts through uh, systematic testing and feedback learning um, uh, in which we uh, try out different options across contexts. And we have to embed our research in development if we're going to do this properly. Because we never get enough money in our research budgets. The people who've got the money are the development partners, ten times uh, uh, the, the magnitude at least. Uh, and the problem is, often development organisations are not using any evidence at all in what they're trying out uh, to improve food security and nutrition. So, what we need to be doing is embedding evidence in systematic testing and then feeding back to make uh, that development dollar more effectively spent.